Biden has said that there were indiscriminate bombings taking place. Do you agree? As it, I've been very clear, too many innocent civilians have died. And so we've therefore very, you agree that the targeting is indiscriminate, therefore if well, too many I, civilians I, have died. I, I'm, not, I'm not privy to the precise targeting, but what I can say is clear that too many innocent people have died. You, you're putting words in my mouth, others yours, may have said no, that. No, your exact words were too many civilians are dying, you've just repeated it here yeah, as well. Yes, and now the, too many civilians are dying. But where does the responsibility sit for that decision making? Sorry? Where does the responsibility sit for too many civilians dying? Well, I mean, well, again, ask Hamas why they embed themselves no, in civilian populations. Or get your popcorn out and watch the chair of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee and Conservative MP Alicia Cairns make our Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's life very uncomfortable over the situation in Gaza and watch our Titchy short stuff, fumble his words, and also show how compassionate he really is for the plight of the Palestinian people. Um, on the point of a ceasefire, your foreign secretary used the phrase, and you have a sustainable ceasefire. What are the conditions or criteria that need to be met for a sustainable ceasefire to be able to come into place? Yes, I think look, it's important if you know for us a ceasefire to be sustainable it's it's absolutely right to ask what are those conditions so that it doesn't <coughs> collapse look, there isn't a perfect formula for peace right but what i can say is that a ceasefire is clearly not going to last if hostages are still being held and that was your first question and also if hamas whose stated aim is to destroy israel is still able to operate in underground tunnels and launch rocket attacks into Israel. So I think those are important facets that we need to grapple with. I think, and ahead of a permanent ceasefire, what we'd like to see are immediate and sustained humanitarian pauses, which allow release of more hostages and more aid to enter Gaza. Uh, and in particular, to go to the previous question about leadership, I think we were the first country to say to the Israelis yeah. they had to open Kerem Shalom crossing so we could get more aid in. That's something that I spoke to Prime Minister Netanyahu about uh, myself, and I'm pleased that that is now happening, not in the quantities that we all want, but it is an improvement. Again, that is the UK showing leadership on this issue and making a real difference to people. And I think we're all very grateful to see that additional aid reopened. But when you last appeared before this committee, I warned you that I feared we were facing the Gaza crisis of 2023. Now, I didn't expect it to come in the form that it has. In response to my question, you called for Israel to adhere to the principles of necessity and proportionality, and you also said at the time that you urged Israel to show restraint. Can you give an example of where the UK has achieved restraint in the IDF's response to the horrific atrocities that took place on the 7th of October? I mean, from the beginning of this, from my first visit to Israel, we have made repeated calls for Israel to adhere to international humanitarian law. To take but every practical... where have we achieved restraint or a change in their behaviours? Because that's the goal of raising it with them, is to achieve national defence. I mean, I'm obviously not the one making operational decisions on the ground, but we have consistently urged Israel where they can to avoid harming innocent civilians. Far too many have died, and that is about providing notice, providing safe areas, safe passage. Um, during the early phases of the conflict, uh, but also about making sure that aid reaches those people who need it. Um, I just, I said early on, we focused on getting RAFA opened, which happened. Yeah. We also focused on making sure fuel was able to come in because that was necess necessary. Uh, but also, most recently, as I said, in Kerem Shalom, again, that has happened. So these are all proof points that the approach we're taking is yielding On outcomes. the humanitarian side, it certainly is. Uh, but those are, um, those, those are all things that are making a real difference to people. Yes, but they're not necessarily preventing bombings, targeting. So, for example, Biden has said that there were indiscriminate bombings taking place. Do you agree? As it, I've been very clear, too many innocent civilians have died. And so we've therefore been very, you agree that the targeting is indiscriminate, therefore, if well, too many I, civilians I, have died? Well, I'm not, I'm not privy to the precise targeting, but what I can say is clear that too many innocent people have died in this conflict. But you will have received advice from government lawyers and submissions. Have any of those submissions or any advice you've received from lawyers or anyone within Number 10 suggested that international humanitarian law is being broken? No, again, government never comments on the legal advice it receives. Now, that what is absolutely clear. I've been consistent throughout this from day one. We can't forget what happened. Hamas perpetrated an appalling terror attack on Israel. Innocent people were slaughtered. Uh, and Israel has every right to defend itself, to ensure its security, make sure that nothing like that ever happens again yeah. to its citizens. 
we would do exactly the same. But there are also limits under international law. And of course there are, and I've made that point from the beginning, and we've consistently called on Israel to do that. So uh, forgive me, though. But we will always do. Forgive me, Prime Minister. Your your current foreign secretary, when he was Prime Minister, was quite happy to state when he felt that international humanitarian law was being broken in Syria. Equally, Joanne Sklever's foreign secretary was happy to say that war crimes are taking place in Ukraine. So surely there is a precedent that you are able to say if you believe that two million civilians are dying that bombings have been indiscriminate and therefore that the principles of necessity and proportionality are not being upheld. Uh, you, you're putting words in my mouth. Others may you're, have said no, that. No, your exact words were too many civilians are dying. You've just repeated it here yeah, as well. Yes. And now, the, too many civilians are dying. Of course, of course too many yeah. civilians are dying. That is different from saying humanitarian law so has who, been broken. So I thought every, every civilian, quite where frankly, is the responsibility every, for every, too every, many every civilian dying is a tragedy. <laughs> But where does the responsibility sit for that decision making? Sorry? Where does the responsibility sit for too many civilians dying? Well, I mean, well, again, ask Hamas why they embed themselves no, in civilian populations. But I think that's a genuinely an extraordinary question. Yeah. Uh, responsibility of civilians dying. It's, it's, it's the two sides to this. Israel is trying to defend itself if the terrorist organization which is perpetrating these attacks is deliberately embedding itself inside civilian populations, yeah. then they have to accept responsibility for that. And I think Israel it was, it rightly should take every precaution to avoid harming civilians, but that will be very difficult if the precise organization which has caused untold suffering to the Israeli people is hiding among civilians, knowingly doing so, knowingly putting them in harm's way. And it's important not to forget that that is what is going on here. Very brief final nobody's, question. Yes, promise nobody's forgotten the crimes against humanity that took place in Israel. There's no more equivalence between the two of them. However, whether it was Northern Ireland, where the UK police had to show restraint and ensure that civilians were not, loss of life was not out of line, disproportionate with the military objectives. When fighting Daesh as well, Daesh did the exact same tactics as Hamas, and yet we did not see this level of casualty. So therefore, will you do more to achieve actual restraint in some of the actions that are taking place on the ground? Uh, we, we have repeatedly and will repeatedly call on Israel to show restraint, to operate within international humanitarian law, to take every possible precaution to avoid harming civilians and, crucially, to allow far more aid to get into Gaza to actually help people. And that is what we are doing and it is showing that it is working. As I said, the opening of Karam Shalom is meaningful. Uh, we're also exploring alternative maritime corridors, which we've been clear, given our assets in Cyprus, we can play a leading role in. So we are working every which way to get more aid to the people who need it. We've already tripled our aid into the region, and we continue to have dialogue with all our partners uh, about the future of Gaza post this conflict, and that involves my conversations with the Palestinian Authority and others to make sure that we can provide a future for the Palestinian people um, where they can live with dignity, prosperity and security. That is something that we are completely committed to and will continue to work very hard to bring about. The only thing I do enjoy is a bit of blue and blue action. And clearly after Sarah Champion had before mocked him about his leadership skills, he must have thought he was going to get his belly tickled by Alicia Keynes. But she was having none of it, was she? Especially when she brought up examples to absolutely blow his nonsense out of the water about Israel having the right to defend themselves by indiscriminately killing innocent civilians. Now, I know I will vehemently disagree with Alicia Cairns on politics and on an averting record as well. But I will say she's very impressive at what she does and I can imagine her being very good across the dispatch box as well. If only the crazies would give her a chance, but I don't think she's crazy enough. But his petulant side shone through, didn't it, when he brought up Hamas. To, to me, he seemed to think that those living in Gaza, while trying to put food on the table for their family, if their family is still alive, in a home that has managed to stay up from the indiscriminate bombing from the Israeli government, must overthrow Hamas, you know, in within their free time attending family funerals and dodging sniper bullets. Absolute bell tap. Total loss of reality. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below. And there'll be a few of these liaison committees. Believe me, absolutely brilliant. So I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friend.